Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to La Trobe City Council's online workshop with Neil Betts. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank Neil for your continued support, um, not only for the Let's Talk Business uh, online series, but uh, in more general, uh, the support for, your team, for our team is, has been great. Uh, my name's Shane Little. I'm the coordinator of the business development team here at Council. So this is our fifth online workshop that we're delivering as part of the Let's Talk Business online series and it's a way for us um, to provide access for business to local subject matter experts like Neil. So there's a number of support mechanisms that Council's currently put in place in response to COVID-19 and I encourage everyone to ensure that they're across those it's, um, and to find out more you can visit Council's website it's www.latrobe.vic.gov.au forward slash COVID-19 business support that's all one word. Uh, Council has also established a dedicated business help desk to assist businesses navigating through the support that's available. Um, and to access that, you just give La Trobe City Council a call, 1300 367 700, or email Latrobe at latrobe.vic.gov.au, and a specialist officer will be able to be in contact with you and navigate what support may be available for your business. So this session today will be recorded and available on our website following the presentation. Um, so please note any questions or, or chat will also be recorded as part of that. All participants will be followed, will, e will be emailed following the webinar with links to how to stay connected with our team, links to the support page I mentioned before, and some handy downloads that Neil has provided. Well, that's it from me. I'd like to now hand over to Neil to uh, kickstart the today's session. Thanks, Shannon. So first of all, I'd just like to thank you and LCC for giving us this opportunity. Um, welcome, everybody. My name is uh, Neil Betts. I'm the Director of Business Outcomes here at Inter Project Management. We're a local business, been established since 2013. We're in the Latrobe Valley. Um, and look, you know, I'm fortunate that every day I get to work with businesses just like those that are attending this, this webinar and probably those that are listening. Fortunate that I get to work with them every day, business owners and individuals, to really help organisations see and understand and solve problems and ultimately, you know, help them improve and reduce their cost to serve. And the reason I do this is because we're passionate about, particularly our local community, we're absolutely passionate about helping organisations to uh, succeed. Um, our vision is actually to enable everyone to solve their own problems and our mission is to try and inspire people to become lean thinkers and create more value not only for their own organizations but for their customers but more broadly for their community and for your own personal development um so i'm just going to take you through a little, little bit of an agenda today i've got a fair bit to get through i want to just talk a little bit about us and what we do i'm going to Look into what is continuous improvement, um, talk about how we categorise problems in our world and then dive into the A3 tool. And whilst the A3 tool is a, a wonderful tool, it's actually the process that's key to this. It's, it's actually the process of improvement and uh, how that works that we really want to hook into. And at the end, I've got a little bit of an offer and uh, we'll pick that up if you survive to the end with my Pommy action. So I'll get straight on into it. So like I said, our, our vision is to, is to solve problems within organisations. I was introduced to Lean um, back in 2010, while I was, I was actually the, the maintenance manager out at Hazelwood Power Station there, and we were doing a big change programme, and part of the change programme was this thing called Lean, and I saw the absolute power of what this can do, and uh, that's why we uh, eventually I started the business doing two things, our business does two things. We do business transformation and we do project transformation. We uh, actually started myself and my partner, Chris Alford, back in 2003. Like most small businesses, we had humble beginnings. You know, the picture on the screen there is, is of my little study where the two of us crammed in there for nearly two years, evolving and growing the business. Um, and today, we have been successful, successfully going for seven years, working with lots of businesses. We work from the corp, the big corporates like Energy Australia and AGL, 
We've worked through all layers of government, from the Australian Tax Office, through to the state government with regional development, Victoria, through to local council, City of Casey, Southern, South Gippsland, La Trobe City Council. So we do a whole range of business improvements across many industries. We work in the not-for-profit sector with organisations like La Trobe Valley Enterprises. And we've been working in small business with the Hazelwood Supply Transition um, down here. We've also got connections to the lean global community and very connected to health. Done some work and seen how people like Stanford Hospital over in America use lean and we're very connected to the lean global network. So I'm hoping today I'll be able to, to, to get some of that connection out to you and help you understand. Um, more recently, we started a growth strategy last year and we started to, it's no longer just me and Chris, we brought Suzanne in. Suzanne is a business improvement leader. Today, she's over at 180 running a workshop on, on improvement with the, the, the water plant over there. We've also, uh, you can see the picture there of us in our beautiful site gear. We, we run projects across the, across the state as well for organisations and that's some of our team there. About me, well, you know, I'm, you probably picked up already that I, I'm a Pommy. Uh, I came out here in 2006. I had over 30 years in the power industry. Makes me sound old. Um, and 10 years of that was really in leadership executive roles. And uh, in 2013, I, I set up this organisation with Chris. I'm a buddy DJ. That's the picture with me and one of the, uh, the LVE employees. I did a Christmas party for them and... I've got a new budging DJ here with me. And I'm a family man. I have a wife and a, a young daughter, uh, an 11 year old going on 18, who's uh, the, the, the heart of my life. That's a bit about us and what we're about. And uh, we're head on to the whole thing around continuous improvement. Now, I have had a number of questions that, that have come through, and I'll try and answer those as I go along. If you really uh, want to just put in, feel free to unmute and just ask me a question as I go along. Absolutely happy for you to do that. More than happy. So the picture there of continuous improvement, that's actually a gentleman called John Shook, and we've been fortunate that he's one of the, the world leaders in this space, and we've been fortunate to meet with John and to, and to work with John, and got a lot of learnings that we pass on. But I guess let's start about what is continuous improvement? And how do we look at organisations? It doesn't matter how big, how small, ultimately, we look at them across those four end-to-end -end business process steps that we got there. So it doesn't matter what size or scale the business is, we always start with, okay, how do we boil that down into four steps and what are the processes within those four steps? So you can see up there, I've got the sales and marketing so that's the whole piece around okay we've got a product and service that we want to sell how do we sell it how do we market it? we're no expert in this space you know we, you, if you saw the presentation that john did from a view to here around the way you brand and sell yourself that's a fantastic webinar you'd be worth tapping into that but we look at the process the process of selling you know you've you you've basically only got 10 percent of the people who are the real buyers, 20 percent of people who are motivated to buy, 30 percent of toy kicker, kickers and 40 percent of what we call the legends. But how do you determine who, how you're going to sell? How do you quantify whether you should be chasing, the, chasing these sales? What are your processes in that sales and marketing space? And then when you land a, a sale, that next step is around, okay, how do we now plan to deliver our widget or our service, whether we're manufacturing or whether we're in, in a service industry? How do we deliver those services? And then the third step is the actual delivery of the service. You know, the first step, that second step is planning. What resources do I need? What materials do I need? The third step is more about how do I actually deliver that service? And then the fourth step, are around how to achieve the business outcomes and the most important one is getting the cash in the bank to sustain your business. So with that sort of framework in mind, um, 
I ask people to, to come, come forward with uh, the, the top problems that they're trying to solve in the business at the moment. So if you can just start up the chat window, I'm just going to pause there and just plop into the, into the, into the chat window your, your answers to what is the top problem you're trying to solve at the moment. I've had a few come through and through from Shannon, uh, one around the need to document your processes. I've had one around, I need to be sustainable, an interesting one around how to develop an action team, corporate culture, very interesting culture. We're going to talk some culture and leadership in lead in a short while. Lead quality lead generation. Um, there was another one, data consolidation. How do we consolidate data in today's world? Data is is huge. Uh, thanks, Ankit. Removing waste from processes. We're going to talk about waste, and I'm going to talk about the the different types of waste. Now, the question around, you know, what are, what is the biggest waste that we see when we go into processes? And I'll, I'll share that with you shortly. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter where your your business processes that you, you've got problems with. All I want to teach you is some concepts and some lean thinking about how we go about this. And ultimately, you know, you've got a product or service that you want to deliver and you've got a client that is looking for some value. And really, this is the heart of lean. The customer is the absolute center of, of what we do. So the definition of lean is our ability to create the most value in the eyes of that customer from that customer's perspective or utilizing the fewest resources that we can and the talents of our people. I've worked in so many organizations where there is real untapped potential of the people. And that's a real big thing about lean, about trying to, trying to involve everybody in the whole notion of process improvement and tapping into everybody's ability. It doesn't matter who they are, there's lots of people who are touched up and downstream on, on processes. So that's really the, the, the foundation of Lean, is creating value for your customer while using the, the fewest resources and utilizing the talents of your people. But the history of Lean goes back a, a long way. It's, um, it, it goes all the way back, and I'll just flip this, I'm not gonna to spend too much time on it. It goes all the way back actually before the 1900s. You've got people like Frank and Lillian up there on the left-hand side. Frank was very much a time and materials man, on the stopwatch, how long to do the task. Yet his wife was more about getting into the, into the human psyche about what motivates people. Then you've got people like Henry Ford who brought things in like standardization. You can have any model of car providing it's black. Standardization. Then you've got the, the quality movement, people like Deming that you've probably heard of with the plan do, check and adjust through to the sort of founders of what Lean is today, the architects of the Toyota production system. And then through to the more modern era where you've got through your constraints and Six Sigma and stuff like that, all these things all come together that really bring a set of tools and thinking to what Lean is today. And we do a lot of work, you know, in startups today. We do a lot of work with a Lean startup about testing hypotheses and getting going on, on Lean. So Lean's got a, a big, strong history and it's got lots and lots of tools that are, are, are all a part of it, and my little point has just stopped working. Um, so what I want to be able to do today is just walk you through some of the concepts uh, of what goes into to Lean. So if this is all about the customer and the value we're going to create for the customer, the customer has got to be at the forefront of our mindset. So we have to really understand what adds value in the mindset of the customer. So that's a real fundamental to lean. Then we need to identify in our process, how do we create the value through our process? And how do we take out anything that isn't creating value? What is waste in that process? How do we take out waste? And then how do we create a flow through our process at the pull of the customer? If you think about McDonald's years ago, they used to have the burgers under the heating lamp. You turn up and you buy your burger that was just there and had been there for a period of time. Whereas today, it's, it's at the pull of the customer. It's just in time. So 
the notion is trying to get this pull of the customer and deliver your goods and service just in time. And the key there is the pursuit of perfection. How do we continuously improve? How do we move forward and improve as we go? We talk about waste a lot and uh, waste in a, in, a, in a process in our mind is anything that, there's, a, there's an acronym Tim Woods and the T stands for transport, things that are moving, moving product from a production line to another part of the production line. Inventory is the I, is the unfinished work, stuff that we haven't done. The M is motion, searching, sorting. We see heaps of that in the service industry, trying to find for files. We've got a rule in our business. It's the five second rule to find any, any document that we want. We don't always match it, but that's what we're striving for. So motion, the sense of searching. The W is for waiting. A lot of this goes on in the service industry. We're waiting for stuff. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for approval. Over production. We make too much over processing. We put too much in that's adding addition, additional things to our product that our customer doesn't actually value. Defects, you know, things that aren't right. And probably the, the one in the human psyche is the whole piece around skills and not utilizing the skills of our people. So that's it in, in terms of the sort of concepts and thinking that are going around there. So there's a bit, I, I apologize for the, some of the Japanese te, uh, terminology in here, but the key concepts are around understanding where we create value, that value that the customer wants, and where do we create that in our process, taking out the, the waste that, that's given us overburden or in, unevenness and not giving us stability, trying to standardize the way that we deliver our processes. One of the questions that came through was, you know, what's the biggest waste you see? And I think the biggest waste I do see is that a lot of people do things differently. It's the same process, but different people do it differently. And some are good at it, some are not so good at it. And that's probably where the biggest waste is. In the service industry, the biggest waste today is paperwork. I see whether that's in a digital sense or whether it's in the physical sense, searching, finding, sorting. Um, creating that continuous flow, having the pull at the customer, doing things just in time, and visual management is a real key piece of lean. But the key importance and the real thing about today in the webinar is problem solving by everybody in the organization. If you can teach people to problem solve and bring those skills up through the organization, the power of that is tremendous in helping organizations. So that's really the, um, the key thinking. And one little tip I want to give you around waste before we get into problems is trying to understand why problems exist is really difficult. Doing that root cause analysis and deep diving deep, people find hard. But, you know, actually, this is a simple tool that I'm just showing you there called the five whys. It's a simple foot tool for drilling down and finding issues in, in processes. Because what you're trying to find, you're trying to get down to what is the real thing that's causing my problem? What is the true problem? And you can see there, you know, nurses are complaining. So we ask the why question. Well, why? Well, there's extra work for the nurses. Well, why? Well, the patients are being moved to other rooms. Yes, but why? Patients are submitted to the wrong room, but why? the data entry operator made an error. Why? Because the forms are difficult to fill out. Or you can see there's another path where it says the software is inflexible. But is that the true problem or is that the cause? What is, the, what, is the, what is going on with these nurses? The extra work is therefore reducing their efficiency. So the costs are increasing or the patients are confused and upset. They're the true problem. So using the five whys is a real simple tool to, uh, to get to help with problem solving. So if you have one takeaway from today, use the five whys, it's an incredibly powerful tool. Um, just flowing on. So that was the, the key concepts around there. The other key thing in, uh, in this is something that Deming came up with in continuous improvement. 
the plan, do, check, an act, we call it a just in our world. So you plan to do something, you go do it, you check how you've done, and you do some adjustment, you put the peg in, a bit like Lupin's change theory, you put the peg in, you do that adjustment, and then you keep learning and improving as you go on. So plan, do, check, adjust is a fundamental part of, of business improvement. And then finally, the actual lean transformation work, this, this is a, a whole model around how we approach organizations for, for organizational transformation. And probably one of the biggest things that we see is often the value dream, the value driven purpose, that roof that's on the house there, often people struggle to define that. And this is a, a, at, the, at the top of an organization. If your value-driven purpose is to make money, it will take you down a certain path. If your value-driven purpose is to actually give people who are disabled employment, it will take you down a certain path. So understanding your true north, your value-driven purpose is absolutely key. And then in an organization, once you've got that, there's work to be done. And in that work, there is probably improvement that can be made. So the first pillar there is the piece around process improvement. How can we improve the work that we're doing? What's the current state? What could the future state look like? And what's the gap? So that key pillar there is around how we do the work to actually deliver our value-driven purpose. Then the other pillar is what capability do I need in my people? What's the capability that I need to actually go and improve the process or run the process? What capability do I need in my people? And then we've got the piece in the middle, which is around the, the leadership and, the, and what we call systems. What do I need of my leaders to empower my people to actually find problems and solve problems for themselves? And what are the management systems that I need in place to, to manage that business? And I've been in many organizations and in local government. I've seen software systems that are enablers to process. And, you know, I've seen organizations with over 120 different software applications not linked together, real heaps of waste in that systems piece. So systems are really important. But all of this is actually underpinned by some, some real thought fundamentals like respect for everybody, by problem solving, by the plan, do, check, adjust, and by a thing called Gemba, which we'll touch on later. Um, so before we get going in this piece, we start to ask ourselves, there's some questions that can draw out from an organization, the problems. What are the problems that you're really trying to solve? What's really standing in your way to, today? These are open discovery type questions. What does success look like to you? What does success look like? What have you done already to try and solve the problem? You may have put some improvement in place, but it's not addressed the problem, or it's addressed one part of the problem and created some upstream or downstream effect. What will happen if you don't try and take the next step? So these are open, real open questions that we can ask about how we think about process improvement within an organization and what do you need the most right now. So that's the transformation framework. But then, you know, what about your business, you know? How would you rate your business today in terms of continuous improvement? Pop, pop, if you can get the chat system up, just pop in the chat system. How do you rate your business today? Where one is you're not at all in the continuous improvement space or five it's embedded in everything you do you know none of us are perfect continuous improvement is in our dna and it's embed embedded Sharon, three out of five well done michelle in the middle smack in the middle two and a half thanks jonathan two and a half so it's it's around how can we you know what do you aspire for that to be. If you aspire for that to be a three and you're a two and a half today, there's a gap and we just got to look at what that gap is. So I'm just uh, giving you a broad overview of how we think of continuous improvement today.
what I want to do now is just start to drill into, okay, what about problems? How do we discover problems? How do we define and categorize problems? And I guess it's, it's really important to understand this. There are four types of problem. One, two, three, four, fairly straightforward. Number one, I have spent most of my career in this space. This is the firefighting space. This is the, we're troubleshooting. Something's happened today, I need to deal with it. It's the, it's the reaction to a problem that's actually causing us issues today that we need to address. So it's, it's troubleshooting, and the way we respond to that is obviously very reactionary. The second type of problem is where we have a gap from a standard. So we have a standard that we've set, but we're not quite meeting that standard. There's a problem that's occurred, there's something that's stopping us meeting that standard. So that too is a reactionary type problem. We have to react to that where there is a gap from, from that target. Then we have the target condition. This is where we're meeting a standard. We're pretty happy with that standard but we want to actually take it to the next level. We want to raise the bar. We want to improve what we do above and beyond the current standard. So that's a proactive response. And then we have the, the, type, the type four that we call it, the, the vision orientated, the innovation, where we want to actually break the, break the barrier and just leap into the future. So what we have here is really, we have those problems that are reactive and those problems that are proactive. So where are you today? Just pop that in the chat. Where, where's your organization today? Where do you think you're sitting there? Are you in the reactive? Are you in the proactive? Are you sort of in the middle? Because I've spent most, most of my career has been spent in that one and two. Where are you today? Where do you see your organisations in the types of problems that you're dealing with? Yeah, two to three. So I guess what we really need to do now is have a look at, regardless of those problems, how do we actively find solutions? How do we get out of this reactive mode and start getting proactive and start raising the bar and start moving forward. So that's where I want to spend the, the, the last 30 minutes just talking through the A3 and the A3 problem solving and what it can do for an organisation and the template itself and the process. And uh, we'll pass you this at the end of the, at the end channel. We'll put this in the pack for you. So, the A3, it's a, it's a tool, it's a, a process, and it's all based fundamentally on the plan, do, check and adjust. It's a, it's a problem solving process and a problem solving tool. But it can be used for lots of things. It can be used for proposing improvements. It can be used, as it says there, for standardization. It is an extremely good communications tool. If uh, any of you saw Leah's uh, webinar a few weeks ago, she talked around the, the, the circle of concern, the circle of influence, and the circle of control. The, the A3 process gives people that option to express their concern, to actually do some influence, whilst they might not be able to control some of the stuff that's going on. It actually is a great communication tool. It can be used for planning, it can be used for reporting, it can be used just for reflection on a process. It can be used as a simple project and change management tool. It's great for sitting down with a group of people and getting alignment and agreement 
um, I did a piece with the uh, the ATO years ago where I got the ATO and I got their service provider, IBM, and we sat down. And you could see there was a massive disagreement with what was going on, and the A3 just tailored this discussion and got alignment. It's great in organisational development, mentoring, coaching, but what is it? What is this tool? And more importantly, what is the process? Because it's actually the process that's key to this, not the, not the tool. So fundamentally, most people know where they are in a process. They know the current, what we call the current state. They sort of have an aspiration to what good could look like. They've got some idea of what good could look like. And really, it's that gap that really identifies the problem. So once you understand your current state and you can aspire a future state, you can actually start to understand the gap and break that down into some thinking that can help you problem solve. So the actual <coughs> process itself is actually fairly straightforward and it's the process, not the tool, that's the most important. I can't stress that enough. The tool itself, it's an A3 piece of paper. It's why it's called the A3. It began years ago with Deming in the, in the 60s and it's been evolved over time. And it really does tell a story around the problem that you're trying to look for. And it, it, it's all on a page. So it's a problem on a page and it's described on a page for a reason to try and force you to be concise with what's going on, to try and help you really understand what's going on and, and put it all together. But ultimately, that's the tool, but it's the process that brings it to life. So the process in it is extremely, extremely powerful to help bring people together to communicate and understand. And like it says, there, it fosters a dialogue. That communication piece is really key, and it forces the five S. I don't know how, how many people have heard of the five S model, where you you sort stuff out, you set everything in order, you make it shine, you standardise, and you sustain. And this is not, this, it can be done in the context of it's a workshop and I want to make it look nice and pretty and find all my tools, but it can be done even in service industry. You know, you can set, sort out all your documents, set them in order, make it shine so you can find everything, standardize the way you do things. So it forces a 5S thinking in the model. It leverages plan, do, check and adjust because you're going to plan, you're going to do some doing and it's going to do some force you to do some doing, have some checking, and have some adjusting in that whole A3 process. And it clarifies the link between the problem and this strange word called a countermeasure. What can I do to fix the problem? How can I find something to address that root cause? And it encourages frontline thinking and it develops problem solving within an organization. And I guess you know, if I've got, I've worked in so many organisations here in, in, in La Trobe and so many things, that are, so many stories about the power of this tool, right from, you know, my Hazelwood days where we were working with the storemen and, you know, the thing that those guys got the most frequently was the furthest away from the store's counter. They walked um, not quite miles, but they walked a long way down a warehouse to go get the PPE, which was the most frequently got item, but nobody thought to move the PPE closer. And when we unpacked that with the A3, the solution was to actually provide this thing in vending machines where the customer needed it, right on site down the mine. That was the thinking behind it. How can we actually look at this from a customer's perspective what does the customer value it probably doesn't value going off site to the stores to go get some ppe to come back on site it probably valued to be able to get the equipment where he needs it so the a3 helped us unpack that so if we just go a little bit further into the the thinking of the a3 the the key here is to try and identify the real problem what is the real problem? Why does it need to be addressed now? Who owns that problem? Can we identify what the real issues are? Can we think about some countermeasures? And when we choose some countermeasures, 
how do we know what's the right thing to attack first? How do we identify the priority of those? How do we get agreement amongst people who are concerned? How are we going to implement it? How are we going to plan? And how will we know if we go and make a small change that our countermeasures actually worked? How do we know that? What issues can we see? And how will we keep that continuous improvement notion going? So the thinking behind it is more important than the tool itself. Because it's the thinking that really helps us define the, the process for unpacking the problem and trying to address with solutions. And the whole notion of lean is we don't find all these big things that need fixing and go fix them. The whole notion is small iterative improvement over time with this lots of plan, do, check and adjust cycles to help us iterate improvement over time and get us to our future state. And often we'll make changes in an organisation and we'll get to a, a new state and we won't have even seen a third state or a fourth state ahead of us because it was just too far in our thinking. So the A3 thinking steps are, are, are really important. And I guess the real key is the process of the format. So you have a problem, what's the thinking we're going to do to address it? And then we pop that idea out into a tool. So it's, I can't iterate that enough around it's all about the process. So I just want to stop there and check in with you. Uh, how are we doing? Have you got any questions you'd like to raise so far? No, I'll keep, keep heading on then. So ultimately, it's the thinking that is actually the real key to this. And uh, the tool itself is fairly straightforward. It's laid out with these sections. We encourage organisations to create their own view of that form. And as long as it's got the main headings on there, you can create it and own it in your own organisations. And the, the first thing is, what is the background to the problem? What is it that we're talking about? And why? What is that problem? If that problem is that, you know, we, uh, we want to develop, or I'll use an example from one of you, we want to develop an action team. Oh, okay. Why do we want to do that? There's obviously something that's in the current condition. There's some reason or rationale for doing that. So why do we want to create this? And then, the, so the background just tells us a little bit about why we're talking about this topic. And then the current condition is describing, well, what is it that we're doing today? And really, what is the problem? What is the real problem behind that? And can we start to visualize what that future could look like? What would it look like? And if we could visualize that, what's our target and how do we want to get there? What does our target outcome look like and how do we get there? And then once we understand that, we sort of got that picture of our current state. We've got the picture of our future state and now we can see the gap in the middle. And then if we just analyze what the root causes of our current problem, and do the five whys and do some understanding of it and trying to work out, well, what can we do as some countermeasures? We can then start to say, okay, we've never all these countermeasures. How do we prioritize and what's going to give the customer the most value? If we fix which part of the process will give us the most value, which countermeasure is going to create the greatest value to the customer? And then we will prioritize those countermeasures. We develop a plan and the plans can be simple. It doesn't have to be a complex plan, a simple plan for how we're going to deliver it, who's responsible, what's our time frame. And then the follow-up is, you know, the whole piece is, are we going to anticipate any issues? How do we know if we've achieved our target? What are we going to measure to actually tell us that we've achieved that target? So if that is around, uh, we've got an example up here, you know, of a problem around adapting a new way of doing business from being face-to-face -to, -face to possibly going online. Well, that's the... 
what's the background to that? What the background to that is the current situation with COVID. And what's the current condition? If you like our business, where we're very face to face with people, we workshop with 30 or 40 people in the room and we do value stream mapping and suddenly we can't do that. We do a lean awareness where we do a simulation with organisations to help them understand link. We can't do that. So how, how do we adapt to our my future state could be, could I do this online? Could I actually produce this, this system that can do this online? Now, if so, what would that look like? And what are the countermeasures? What are the things I need to do? Well, I probably need to build this little system and how can we do it? And what we've done, we've had to transition like most people in COVID and we've actually tried with some online stuff and we've actually been encouraged by what we've learned from doing that and we're going to carry on creating some of this digital technology for ourselves because we're seeing value in it so the, the a3 template just forces you through the process and the thinking and then the real thing is there's a problem with the problem and that problem is assumptions we make many many assumptions when we start to unpack problems we have a perception of the problem and we then come up with some theory around that solution and there's a black hole as we describe it in the middle there and that black hole is facts. So when we do the analysis of a problem, you've got to back that up with information and some facts because you'll end up putting in wrong solutions, finding incorrect measures. And I'm going to give you a quick example here. This is a, a real example from a piece of work that we did recently. On the left-hand side there, where you've got the assume maintenance process, this is a maintenance process for a big organisation. It had six steps in the process. We put a maintenance request in, we plan to execute the work, we schedule when the resource is available, we execute the work, we complete the work order and we close the work off. I was told that process is linear. One to six, the way we go, it's a linear process, Neil. So what's the problem? Oh, the problem is all about, you know, access to the plant. We never get access to the plant. It's just delays in accessing the plant. So give me some data. And we were given transactional data that we used a tool called Power BI, which is a Microsoft tool. And we just visualized the changes in that process. And that little picture you see there, a picture of craziness was that linear process that's no longer that linear. So if I would have believed them that it's a linear process and their problems are just about accessing the plant, I'll go work with operations and see how we can get the scheduling better with our operational requirement and maintenance requirement. It would have led me down a certain path to a solution. But by stepping back and analysing data and really trying to get that analysis piece about the problem, you can see that you know, the, the actual problem was very, very different to what it was being described. So don't under, underestimate the, the value of data, but not all organisations, small businesses, they don't have data, they don't have some of that. So there's another trick that we have up our sleeve. <coughs> and that other trick is a thing called the Gemba. Now the Gemba is also an analysis tool to help us with the A3. And the Gemba, Gemba is a Japanese word and it really means go to the place where the work is done. Woo. Go to the place where the work is done and observe the work being done. I did a piece for La Trobe City Council for their local laws officers. I was working with them on mobilising the local laws officers in the field. There was lots of problems we were trying to address and I got these crazy ideas that we could go out in the field and have a lovely tablet and the guys could go and knock on the door and have a conversation about a stray dog or a noise issue and just have a tablet and tap away and have all the problem there. I went to did a gemba with those guys. I sat in the car and bummed around the row with the, with the local horse following their work pattern. We go to the first house and there was a bit of a complaint and what I saw was three, four, five people around this officer and the, and the issue was sort of bubbling and escalating and I'm thinking, well, now I've seen it with my eyes, I can see that the solution that we had in place is not going to work. Maybe have something in the car for after the discussion, but to have a, a technology solution actually at the door is not going to work. So the Gemba really helps you identify and visualize 
what's going on in the current state of a process. I've done this with organisations where I've sat in, in call centres and I've put the headphones on and I've listened to the girls answering the calls on the call centre and gone, oh my gosh, now I can see the problem. You get to see it by going and doing this work, but you need to just plan out how you're going to do this, identify what's the purpose, what is, it, what is your purpose, how do you understand that you're going to understand the process you're going to observe, what's a good time to go and see it, you know, I observe. I observed a production line recently at a, a, at a local manufacturing plant down here. And, you know, it's no point me turning up at tea break to reserve a production line when there's nobody around the production line. That example is a great example because observing where the value is created, well, the value was actually the widget coming out of the end of the production line. That was the value that was created for the customer. So understanding where that value is was key and understanding that all the other pieces are just adding to that value. Observing the process, so when I saw every three or four minutes a machine stopped because it was blocked up with nails and somebody going and whacking it with a, a bit of a hammer and getting the nails flowing again and then away we go. And once you observe that, you start to see. And there's other tools that you can use for actually measuring. You know, we, we knew in that case how many widgets per hour we should be knocking out. And we just measured how many we did over a, a different set of periods and we suddenly got an efficiency measure, a real measure of how widgets were being created. So actually understanding the Gemba and going and having a walk, it's a real easy thing. Just go to the place where the work is done and observe what's going on and try and, try and understand that current state of your process. And it doesn't matter whether you're looking at a, a service where it's a document management system. We just done one recently where we looked at the document management system and going, oh my word. And we got some data and the data said, well, all these documents are reviewed every three years and every three years, two people in the organisation suddenly have a backlog of a thousand documents to approve. You've just got to adjust your timing or go back to the principles of which of these documents is actually adding value to the customer. Which do we have to have that are regulatory? Which don't we need? Have we got too much? Are we over-processing? So going to the Gemba helps you see that. And when you go into a Gemba, there's a few things you need to do, really. And it's just try and map out what the process looks like. There's a step one, step two, step three, step four. What are the things that are happening in that process? What are the questions we should be asking? Do we see any areas? Are there any rework? What's going on? Is there any rework that we can see in there? So the Gemba is a real good place in the A3 to actually have a, 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 do the analysis. If you've got data, that's great. If you haven't, go to, go to see what's going on and observe the simple steps in a process and find the errors, find the rework, and start to think then about what the future state might look like in those countermeasures. Neil, I've just sent through a question um, uh, on the chat. Um, do you ever find that, you know, when you... You're, you're either consulting or it's part of, um, you know, the delivery team doing the work, but, you know, a bit of pushback from that observation piece. H how, do you, how do you sort of get around that? You know, you, you don't want to make employees on the front line feel that they're being, you know, watched or... Um, it's a fantastic question. I, I guess the, the, the hardest transition for me into this country was sort of stepping back a bit and going into that unionised culture that I went into in the power industry. And there we are. I was put into a place that we were trying to bring lean into an organisation and everybody was sort of counter to that. We're not, I get that. This is all about cutting costs, getting rid of jobs. That's what it was portrayed at in the organisation. But it's, it's about clear communication about what you're doing, that this is actually about trying to find waste, taking the waste out of the process so we can add more value and we can shift that value to focus for our clients. So it's creating the value. And if we do free up more of your time, we can put that time and effort back into value creation for the client, not, but not in terms of jobs gone or whatever it means. And the key to doing that is these next couple of slides, and we're nearly at the end, is... It's about the leaders, Shannon, and how we actually how we actually communicate and how we actually enable people from the bottom up. This was a process um, that I talked about there where we were doing some top-down redesigning the, 
the actual vision and the mission and what we wanted out of leaders. That was all being redefined in the organisation. But we wanted bottom up. We wanted to, the word empowerment used a lot. We wanted people to, to have ownership of their process and be able to, to solve problems for themselves. Me as a manager, I'm not probably best placed to fix what's going on the production line. It's been a long time since I've been on the production line. The people on the production line are the most She's the person who knows best how to fix that process. She just needs some tools to open that up. So it's about that empowerment. And it's about actually the way you tackle that as the leadership, which was that gap in the middle of capability and process in the lean transformation model. And it's about the mindset. So we've got two, two quick mindset diagrams I'm going to show you here. One is sort of traditional traditional thinking where it's all about the result. You get some fragmented thinking it, attracts a command and control management everything's about status and reporting metrics and people get defensive and you know this thing goes round and round and round and you don't actually end up you end up with more complexity you know being in organizations just like this but what you're really looking to do if you're really aiming to to bring this through an organization is to start going away from that results orientated and start getting to means orientated we're trying to fix a problem. We're trying to create a greater thing for our customers, start thinking in systems, running little experiments to, to disturb and respond, internalize that, get the respect for your people. It's, that, it's the foundation of what Lean's about. You know, you respect everybody and you, you use those people to, who are best connected to the process to actually articulate the problems in the process. It was great. I've done so many of these where, you know, we'll sit down. The job was a great example, you know, with local laws officers. We're, we're talking about mobilising the local laws officers. Who do we sit down with and workshop the process? Well, we have the girls on the desk at the front. They're the people taking the abuse off the customer who's, who's not very happy that they've had to pay a fine for the dog because it's in the pound. It's... It's the person down the pound at the, at, the, at the maintenance compound where the pound was having to take, having to say to the customer, sorry, we're closed, you can't get a dog, you need to go back to the head office. It's getting those people around, not just the people in the process, it's the upstream and the downstream effect. And um, getting them all involved in problem solving and making sure that everybody has a voice and that you run the, the thinking around everyone's, everyone's view is important and there's no... There's no crazy thinking in all this. Whatever we can do to help solve this problem, let's do it together. So it's about developing the capability of your people, but you need that leadership piece that's right and get away from the piece around observation. And yet it can be a bit confronting that Gemba piece if it's not communicated well up front and if you haven't engaged the team to work together. That production line example I gave down here, you know, <clears throat> this was an industry that's, suddenly a, a, a mill's closed down, one of their clients has gone, <clears throat> potentially the, there's 20 or 30 jobs at risk of being shut down here. Yet we found by working with those guys who could have potentially lost their jobs, we found that we'd got a 40% efficient production line and they didn't see it. They were there every day, nail sticks, we whack the nail in and we get away. Machine stops, machine stops. And the root cause was we bought cheap nails from China, as it happened, and they didn't quite fit the machine. So we changed the nails, production line goes up, we're now making more widgets. So it's about really that respect. And it's about this last, last couple of things about being helpful in your approach, you know, about coaching rather than telling, being humble about it, you know, and helping people question their own process and, and see it for themselves. So the A3 is pretty simply, I'm going to skip through this pretty quick. It's got all of those sections, overview, background, current condition. So the overview, here we are, the background, what's it going? The current condition is made up of what you see and observe and what you've been told. The analysis piece around, have we got data to back that up? Can I go see what that looks like? Setting aspirations about the future. What could this look like? What does good look like? How might we measure that? Finding the root cause with the five whys, putting some countermeasures in place, planning to do it, and then going and executing it. 
So it's fairly straightforward. But what I want to do is just, we'll give you this, you're going to get this as part of the pack. <coughs> what it could look like visualised is something like that. That's just a, a mocked up version where you can see the background's not necessarily all wordy. <coughs> it's got a time frame and some current and expansion requirements. It's just describing the current condition. It's quite visual. It's got the goals and the targets. It's got some analysis of what's to be done. It's got countermeasures of what, what are the things that we've found and how we're going to fix them. It's got a little current state and a target state map. This is what we're doing today. This is how we can envisage that happening. This is our plan on how we're going to deliver that. And this is what we're going to do to follow up and make this happen. And here's another example that I just want to show you as a final picture. Here's another example that was done by one of our clients where <clears throat> you can see here, it's got all those components in, but it's laid out completely different. Absolutely complete. Yes, we will be sharing the slides. There's a, there's a link to the slides, <clears throat> and we'll give you a copy of the A3 as well. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, so you can see here, we've got current condition, we've got goals, we've got the analysis, we've got the next step, we've got a plan, we've got recommendations. Down the bottom, we've identified who's doing this, the stakeholders, internal and external, and how we can actually communicate about the project. So it really is, the A3 on a page is really around a great communication tool to, to see problems and find problems within your organisation. <coughs> and just before I close out, I've got one last little giveaway for you. Uh, um, we have got a, a lean business diagnostic tool that we use. If you would like to, to get a copy of that tool, it's a, a survey that comes out that you fill in. It's got about 60 different questions around your organisation. We then look at your organisation against all the other organisations within your industry that we have in our data set. And we're offering you a free consultancy about what that actually shows you we don't expect <coughs> you to, to look at our services we're trying to help you if you text LCC your name your company an email to that that mobile phone number there we'll get back to you within the next week and we'll, we'll send you out the lean diagnostic you can fill it in once you fill it in the results will go into our visualization tool and then we'll give you a call to organize a, a, a meeting to give you the playback of what we're seeing in your organisation. So if that helps you, please feel free to do that and I'll get Shannon to pop those details into the slide. If you're listening to this post the event, the, the number's 0400 552 247. Just text that through and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give you that. So I'm hoping I've been able to give you a bit of an overview on Lean. And uh, once again, Shannon, I thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, great. Thanks, Neil. That was fantastic. I mean, it's such a... A, a massive topic to um, put into a single one hour um, online session. So I think you've done a, a great job. Um, obviously, given a high level overview and then went into the, the A3 management tool. Um, you know, I was, I was busy, busy um, taking notes um, uh, around how we could apply them in our team account. So I think, um, yeah, some, some really good nuggets. I like that five seconds to find, um, uh, you know, to find a file because. Uh, <laughs> Um, we had Alison start yesterday and I was going through our files and it's um, kind of a mess. So, I mean, that's one little takeaway, but it's probably some, some homework for me over the next uh, couple of weeks to try to get in order to try and reduce some of that wastage. So I really <laughs> like it. Um, really appreciate your time, Neil, um, sharing your, your, your knowledge and expertise in this area. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's fantastic to have a local resource um, like yourself here and like the other presenters that we've had. Um, you know, this, this uh, Let's Talk business series is all, um, all around um, tapping into local resources that businesses have available to them. Um, you know, sharing some... some uh, all credit to you, Shannon, for the idea. And there's some great businesses locally down here. Many, many businesses that can help. Yeah, exactly right. Um, so it's probably a good, great segue into next week. We've got um, a, a session with Lifeline Gippsland. Um, I saw Jonathan, who was on before, um, uh, and, and the team at Lifeline Gippsland are going to talk around, um, it's all well and good to ask, are you okay? We've all, obviously all heard that. Um, uh, but what happens when the answer comes back? 
that, that no, you're not okay? How can you how can you respond to that? How can you um, you know support colleagues during these these quite difficult times? So um, if you're interested, we'd love to have you on board. Another free session um, done by a local organisation doing some wonderful things. So. They're, they're doing some great things down here, visualising. We've helped them visualise mental health data down here. We've got a partnership with Lifeline. I would suggest everyone tap into that because they, they're great people. Fantastic. Great. All right, guys. So I'll, um, once the, the recording's uh, available, I'll send out a link to everyone um, with, the, with uh, the handouts that Neil's provided um, and a link to the recording um, and uh, the support business support page that council set up. So if you get any questions, all my contact details will be on there. So um, fire them through. But once again, thank you for participating. Thanks, Neil. It's a fantastic session. Um, go take a breather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will do. Nearly lost my voice. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thank you.